So in the last video, I described what enzymes are and how they function. In this video, I'm going to describe the factors affecting enzymes. So, factors affecting enzymes. So, as you can imagine, if you want a product, if you want a reaction to occur, and enzymes help it occur. So, if you increase enzyme concentration, you will increase the reaction rate. And make the reactions occur faster, because more enzymes, the more likely they will lower the activation energy and the more likely the reaction will occur. Another thing that affects um, reaction rate is substrate concentration. So if you ink substrate concentration is Essentially, it's just the concentration of the thing that the enzymes act on. Enzymes act on substrates. So if you increase that, you will increase the reaction rate. But only to a certain extent, because if you think about it, if you only have a certain amount of enzymes, you can increase it, increase it, increase it, and then eventually you'll hit a plateau where there's just no more uh, enzymes to be used. And so this graph kind of depicts that with um, the reaction rate here and enzyme concentration. I mean, it's substrate. Let me erase that. Substrate. concentration. And so there's a bunch of other factors that affect enzymes. So let me clear this. And so another factor that affects enzyme is temperature. And so as you can imagine, the warmer the temperature, the more like the the more the solution is going to vibrate and like the more likely a reaction is going to occur. So if you increase the temperature, you will increase the reaction rate and but that only works to a certain extent because as you know enzymes are proteins and if you increase too much the temperature you'll denature the enzyme and essentially what denaturing means is changing the shape of the enzyme uh, so it doesn't function well anymore. Also, another thing is pH. So pH is essentially, it measures the acidity of the solution. Different enzymes have different optimal pH. So, for example, pepsin is in your stomach is an enzyme in stomach that has an optimal pH of around 2 or so, which is very acidic, while, while trypsin is an enzyme and the optimal pH is around 8 and so believe it or not these two they do the same thing and what they do is those two enzymes they break down protein
but since they are located in different locations, oh, trypsin is um, in the small intestine. And so they do the same thing, but at a different optimal pH at a different location. And so as you can imagine, an enzyme breaking down protein is not good all the time. You only want to activate that at certain times. And so what the cell, what the body does is essentially enzymes need cofactors. Actually, sorry, enzymes to be activated, enzymes need to be phosphorylated. And what that means is addition of a phosphate group. by a kinase. And a kinase is just something that phosphorylates and activates enzymes. And so there are ways to deactivate or inhibit the enzyme for a little bit. And so we'll talk about that. So competitive inhibition. is one of them and so what happens in here is let's say this is an enzyme with the active site here in red and so what happens is let's say this is the substrate and this is the inhibitor so as you see they have the same shape right and so how does the enzyme determine which one to bind to well it doesn't sometimes the inhibitor binds here and then essentially they're both competing the inhibitor and the substrate are competing for the active site and so if the inhibitor gets in there first, it inhibits the substrate from being acted upon. And then another way is, let me clear this, another way of inhibiting enzymes is non-competitive. inhibition and so essentially imagine an enzyme we'll make it a square this time but here there's a location and so essentially what can happen is an inhibitor here this is known as the allosteric site And this is the active site on the enzyme. And so what something can do is a molecule, an inhibitor, can go into here, bind to that site, and essentially change the shape of the enzyme. So then you have maybe something like this. And so as you can see, the inhibitor binds and the shape of the active site right there is completely changed and it won't fit the substrate anymore and those two types of inhibition are uh, reversible and irreversible is denaturation so essentially you just mess up the enzyme so bad that it just completely there's no way for it to function anymore such as uh, nerve gas irreversibly inhibits enzymes in the nervous system. Um, cyanide inhibits enzymes involved in ATP reduction and all of that stuff.